Today on this episode, we're out at Barstow. We came out here because, well, our, our air conditioning was spitting out 95 degree heat. Is it still doing that? Well, you'll find out here in just a moment. An unscheduled transmitter trip today. We're going to Barstow. The air conditioning unit is deciding that it wants to spit out 90 degree temperature air. So, can't do that. Apparently there's an accident out there. We are filling up fuel, topping off here in Barstow so that uh, we don't run out of fuel when we get up to the top of the mountain. Cause uh, yeah, there's no gas stations up there. Well, as long as we, we run, up, run out at the top, that way we can just kind of coast down. That would work, right? Yeah, it doesn't work like that very well. Ah. No. Well, good thing we're filling up now then. Indeed, very good reason that we're filling up now. So we're at the entrance of what I call um, Ambush Gorge. And I call it that because this whole area is totally flat, except for this one little section where the road winds through these little areas here where it would be perfect for an ambush. We've got a car in front of us. I'm giving them a little bit of opportunity to uh, get some distance. According to the truck, it says it's 106 degrees out here. We finally made it to our Barstow site. Um, it's taken us three and a half hours to get up here. The truck says it's about 96, 97. It doesn't feel like 96, 97 up here. Feels like maybe high 80s, maybe low 90s. It is pretty dry. And right, I have the keys. All right, let's see here. Key number one. All right, here we go. We walked in, felt the air conditioner. Feels fine to me. All right, let's see here. Outside temperature is 82.6. That's a possibility. Inside 77.9, and my vent temperature is 76. Looks like the air conditioning is working this morning. Um, unlike yesterday, where it said it was 95 degrees blowing out of that vent. Well, at least while we're here, we can look around, clean out the filters, and uh, just do some general site maintenance. Now the key thing is, don't tighten everything down at once. You know, like don't, or I mean, don't don't tighten down each individual one until you have them all in. That way, there's a little bit of wiggle room, in case this is not quite aligned. And then once you have all all four of them in, then you can tighten them down a little bit. And there we go. So the whole reason why we came out here for this site was because the vent was spitting out 95 degree heat. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. That is not 95, that is, that is 60 degrees, 58. I saw it as low as 55 a few minutes ago. So, it's working now, why it wasn't working yesterday, 
I don't know. So I've got a portable little printer. I can fill out the uh, station log, a little transmitter maintenance log, to show that we're up here and that uh, we've done a little bit of work. Kind of see some readings and make sure that everything's just kind of okay. Then it also becomes a tablet. So we're gonna look at our meter readings on here. Transmitter is in remote, yes. Forward power. So everything appears to be okay, just overall. Now I'm gonna type in some notes on the notes section. Usually just kind of describing why we're out here. So we need to look at the tower. Does it appear okay? Yeah, looks okay. Tower appears okay. No rust on tower. Not seeing any really signs of rust. Tower base appears okay. That's where the camera is right now. Uh, satellite antenna. What we always try to do is start the generator manually. And um, for some reason this one, this time we had an alarm. And so I cleared the alarm, started it up in manual. Sounds a little funky. So uh, we'll see. Find anything, Chad? Nope, nothing. Didn't find our tarantula hawk yet? No, unfortunately. That would have been some good footage though. That guy was like that big. Him stinging you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's time to start putting things away. As our time here at this site draws to a close, we have discovered no faults at all with the air conditioning unit, which is the reason why we came out here in the first place. <sighs> sometimes that's kind of, sometimes that's uh, kind of frustrating and sometimes that's really frustrating. All right, let's see, let's put our, the mobile printer away, keep it in this cool little case, keeps it safe in the back of the truck Keeps moisture out of it. Keeps it from getting damaged as it bounces around. I mean, it only really gets used every so often at transmitter sites when I do the, the transmitter log uh, digitally and then I print out the paper sheet, stick it in the binder so that way if someone other than me needs to reference what happened here, they can, like Chad. All right, the last pieces here is my portable little Milwaukee vacuum. It's good for cleaning out filters and dust and things like that. And for sucking up horse flies that want to try to eat you. I hate horse flies. I hate horse flies with a passion. Time to put things away. Maybe one of these days I'll do an unboxing of my box. I guess it wouldn't really be an unboxing, but if I take everything out, would that be considered an unboxing? I carry a lot of tools in here. Not everything I need all the time. Uh, like today, I didn't need this crimper for doing a Cat5 cable or Cat6 cable, data cables. Most of the time, this is the guy that I use. This has uh, screwdrivers, uh, wire snips, um, things like that and my screw gun, but yeah, you know, that's why they're on top. It all fits in here. got some foam up here just to keep everything settled down. And this is great because this, uh, I, I used to have a, uh, uh, I used to have a toolbox or a tool case that was soft sided. And uh, the problem was when you get into a, a truck even though it's got this tonneau cover on it, in the back of the bed, dust still gets in there. And so if you have a soft-sided case, all that dust gets into on your tools. 
So, put it in the Pelican case. Not only are my tools protected, but they're protected from water, they're protected from dust, which is the big enemy that I have is the dust. So, that's why I keep my tools in a Pelican case. Plus, they also kind of double as a very short step ladder. If I need just like six inches to stand on to reach a light bulb or something, you know, it's pretty stable, so. And the last thing that we do before heading out at a site is to turn the lights off, make sure everything is in automatic, in remote, no alarms, and then lock the door. So, lights. Everything's happy, no alarms. Let's get the keys. Lock the doors, and there we go. What is this? What is that? It's a secret little key there. I don't know what that's for. Time to make like a tree and leave. As he flings uh, bugs at me. All right, Marcos, payback time for leaving me at that gate. Bye, Marcos. <laughs> He'll never catch me. No one will ever know he's up here. It's all right. He's got, he's got food provisions. He'll be all good. He'll be good to go. Oh, oh no, he's catching up. He's gonna disable the motor. Oh my goodness, what do I do? Time to get out of here. Let's go. Go home, sit in traffic. Waiting for these guys to get out of the way. They are driving extraordinarily slow down the road. It's like I might as well just sit here because, I mean, they're literally idling down the road. Sad face. Sad face. There they are. Right in front of us. Driving like 10 miles an hour down this road. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't speed down the road normally, but... There's a difference between like excessive speed and normal speed. And this is really, really slow. We finally got past the slow pokes. Finally! They, they, they moved over and stopped so that we could pass. Well, we made it back um, after a lot of driving. Boy, I'm tired. Chad's probably tired too, right Chad? Yep, pretty tired. He's pretty tired. But we're back and now it's time to unload our stuff and uh, go home for the day.